Hello, in this video we're going to be creating clothing for our character because at the moment it's not really wearing much clothes. Uh, so if you don't have the 3D model you can go ahead and download from this link here or if you've been following along with me in this series you can go ahead and use that same file. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off the character is giving a bit of a freaky expression so I'm just going to go ahead and select all the bones by pressing A um, and then hitting Alt R and Alt G to reset the pose back to its default. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hide the rig because I don't want to see anything. I'm just going to go ahead and create simple clothing for our character. So let's start off with the shirt. So tab into edit mode and let's just select the vertices that we want that we want the shirt to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these verts over here and maybe select uh, all these verts where the UV map is. Same on this side, where that, that uh, UV seam is. So let's go ahead and select all of this. Okay, so I might create a shirt it's sort of that long. Maybe I might, might make it a bit longer. Perhaps not too long. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty okay for a shirt. Let's move this teeth out of the way. Okay, so let's go back in the back view and select the correct vertices here. I'm just gonna turn off limit selection. Uh, I'm gonna turn on limit selection to visible because I don't want to accidentally select the front vertices. Okay. And let's just go ahead and deselect that loop here. Actually, no, let's go ahead and select that loop there. Cool. So I think that is a good, um, good foundation for the shirt. Let's go ahead now and simply hit Shift D. Okay, so that duplicates the mesh. Then I'm going to go ahead and press Alt S to make it uh, a bit thicker. Just a little bit, maybe about that much. So now it looks like he's wearing a shirt. Cool, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit P and separate by selection. You can also do it here, mesh, uh, vertices I believe, and then it's separate by selection. So I'm just gonna hit P and separate by selection, same thing. Okay, so by doing that, we now make this model its own object. Our original character, which is named Plane, sorry, that's named Paulie, should be calling it something useful. I put character, but you can create a name for him if you like. Um, for this one, plane 02 is now a separate object. So I'll call this the shirt. So um, if I bring, uh, well, let me first uh, tidy up this shirt a little bit, make it look like a proper shirt. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe turn on proportional editing and then S, Z, make it almost straight and then Turn off proportional editing for a second. Control Z and turn it on again. Bring it down. Scale it out. Like so. Uh, yeah, I think that's looking okay. Scale it out a bit more. This one, SZ, from editing, bring it down a little. Uh, just leave it like that, should be fine. And I think the shirt part is now done. To finalize the shirt model, uh, it's looking a bit papery at the moment, so let's give it a bit more thickness. So just go to the modifiers panel and simply add in a, a solidify modifier. Then I'm going to push that above the subsurface so that we get a bit of smoothness. So now our shirt has some thickness to it. It may be a little bit too thick for a shirt, so I'm just going to go ahead and maybe make it half. So 0, 5 maybe. There we go. It looks like a real shirt now. Uh, I'm also going to remove the inner mouth and the skin material because it's going to have its own material. So if I quickly look at that in rendered mode, we can see that he's clearly wearing uh, a shirt and he's not so naked anymore. Um, and luckily we also save some time because if I turn on the rig again and then pose the character, Oops, sorry, 
let's use a bone that actually that's the IKFK bone so maybe if I just change that to FK for a second so we can clearly see that the uh, shirt is also moving along with the character thereby saving us a lot of time in having to re-rig the cloth and things like that that's generally why I tend to do clothing last I create the first I create the character first and then do the clothing at the end so that we don't have to spend so much time weight painting and setting up the rig for the shirt and so on so it's just a good time saver okay so the shirt is done now I'm simply just going to press H to hide it so now let's create some uh, pants or maybe even shorts for the character um, yeah maybe you might go for three-quarter shorts Cool, so now if I bring back the shirt, uh, we need to adjust the shirt now so that it won't intersect with the um, with the shorts. Yeah, something like that. Same over here. And there we go. We now have given our character shirts and shorts, so it will, well, I'll call it pants, but anyways. Um, we can now go ahead and remove, for the pants, the inner mouth and the skin. And we'll now have a default shader for that. So there we go, the, pan, the shirt, the shorts and the pants are now done. Finally, I might finish it off with the shoes. So let's just do the same thing for the shoes. done but uh, at the moment our character looks a little bit boring uh, that's because we don't have interesting textures and shaders uh, applied to it so let's go ahead and give some shaders to our character so let's call this one shirt let's call this one sh shorts this one socks which I created earlier this one shoes and this one um thing okay you can also add gloves if you like things like that just to make a character more interesting but i don't know i'll just keep it simple for now to add the textures for the clothing i'm just going to go ahead and download one uh clothing texture from google so i load in, in this uh cotton texture so if i can just show you what it looks like that's what it looks like just a very basic cotton texture i'm just, all i'm going to do is simply control um, how much bump that this will affect the model so for this one I'm just going to remove the diffuse shader so for the clothing shader I'm just going to use the principal shader again the principal shader can pretty much be used for almost every kind of material I'll connect that to the surface um, then we can just choose the color that we want for our shirt my might go for a nice uh, yeah a nice orange yeah nice or uh, Oh yeah, or I could just go red. I don't know. I can play around with that and come up with different styles. Maybe the final character that I end up with will have a different, different looking cloth to that. Um, then I want to make it look like cloth. So just turn up the sheen to one, and you may notice that uh, you can't go above one. But to have cloth look like proper cloth, something like ten would be good. And then we may add some, might decrease the sheen a little bit, sheen tint a little bit. Sorry. And then now we have a proper sort of cloth-like material. We can't really see the effect yet, but we'll fix that a little bit later. Um, so that's done. So 
we can sort of see that in this preview here we have a sort of nice cloth like material going on there um, and yeah just going to go ahead and do the same for the other clothes as well okay now that we've done that we want to go ahead and use that fabric texture that we created earlier to affect the bump so i'm just going to go ahead and add uh, shift a vector bump and then connect that color to the height because uh, it is a relatively black and white image i'm going to use a normal of that and you'll see that you have something that looks like that the main reason why i'm looking so big compared to this image is because if you tap into the edit mode you'll notice that we initially uv unwrapped this shirt to be quite big so i'm just going to go ahead and select um so let's just go back into solid mode okay let's go back from paint mode to view mode and simply what you want to do is scale your island so you can sort of match the fabric size to this image so if i go back into rendered mode again you can see that it looks a lot more realistic now that's about how deep i want the fabric to go but i don't want it to have so much bump as strong as that so maybe 0.1 or maybe a bit more subtle than that maybe 0.3 maybe less subtle than that 0.3 might be good i might just actually decrease the uh, scale of this make the fabric size a little bit uh, bigger and there we go I think that's that seems to be okay okay so then just go ahead and do the same for the other materials so to do that I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this control C and remove the diffuse and control V plug that in and then maybe just go over here and change the color uh, maybe something like that might be a good color uh, the fabric here uh, just for stylistic effect I might just increase it a little bit Okay, so after that quick job, here is what my final character looks like with uh, clothing. But as you can see that um, we can do some, some further improvements with our cloth because it's looking uh, just a slight bit flat. I mean, it looks good already as it is, but it's just looking a little bit flat. Okay, so to, just to create some interesting shapes to our shirt, we may as well, uh, we might just go in and sculpt some little wrinkles here and there. If you'd rather just get the completed 3D model, please click on the link below. And also please subscribe, like and share and I hope to see you in the next video.